Sometimes, one nudge is all it takes to get off your couch and out there exploring our beautiful world. However, sometimes one bump in the road is all it takes to derail your plans, put your loved ones in harm's way, and recenter your sensitivity for danger and risk. To understand a little context, let me take you back to the summer. Chris from Frontier State Overland, who if you've watched any of our videos, you'll have heard me say, is my best buddy. Anyway, we bought an old 1940s TC3 trailer and began restoring it into an overlanding trailer. We named it Hicks and spent a lot of time and money making it off-road and overlanding worthy. Its first test was earlier this year during our Hell's Canyon trip and it performed like a champ. So when we pulled off to air down on this trip, we had no reason to think anything would go wrong. Little did we know what was waiting in store for us later in this trip. So we are headed up into the mountains. We just hit dirt, so we're airing down. We're gonna hit some ledge roads. We're gonna see some beautiful views. We're gonna go find a lake and just have a ton of fun. So let's go. It was late in the day when we hit the trail, so we were in a hurry to get to our first campsite. We knew exactly where we were going and had driven this road before, so we leaned in and let it rip to try and get to the campsite before the sun went down. So we're driving up, we're kind of going through these low land areas, about 3,500 feet, and it's full of sagebrush, it seems pretty hot. But we just passed our first pine tree or evergreen tree and so it's a sign of things to come so it's a good sign that we hit a tree hopefully we'll see more here in a second and uh, find a beautiful perch to have a camp Hicks showed no signs of fatigue and while Chris was mindful of pulling the trailer it's so light and with 33 inch tires on it, it just rolls over everything so we weren't really thinking about the trailer we were just thinking about getting to camp and having fun experiences with some of the local residents. So just like we're just like running behind a bunch of turkeys. It's funny because wasn't that like Benjamin Franklin's like the case that he tried to make and that they were hard and That must have been a different breed of turkey than the ones we got here. Yeah, I think so because we could just like reach out and grab one by the neck. Literally. We just flew further up the road, dummy. Go left! Go left! There you go! What I'm doing now. You're going gating? I'm going gating. Alright. You're the great gator. I think I messed up the gate. I might need help. Okay. Brown? You, no. you got some decisions to make, bro. It's not a bra. That's a go. Oh. Ma'am. 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 Thank you. Thanks for moving. I appreciate it. I do the same for you, bro. Ma'am. Thanks for getting off the road. Appreciate it. Move you later. After our close encounters of the animal kind, we were now on our final stretch to our destination for the evening. This trail is fun because of the multiple water crossings, but it's very easy for a four-wheel drive high clearance rig. We were, however, very aware of the private land mixed in along the way, so we did our best to respect those boundaries. So this is an interesting area because we're weaving through public land and private land. There are some old ranches out here, um, and some other properties or some cabins and things people have out here that's mixed in to the public land. So as we're driving through, we're just, you know, we're just careful that if we pass somebody's, somebody's homestead, we slow down so we don't throw up a bunch of dust. And we, we keep checking our guide GPS because we have the private public layers on. And so we know exactly where we are. We're driving on roads that we should be driving on and not driving on roads that belong to other people. There's a little bit of true off-roading at the end of this section of the trail. Just enough to make getting to our campsite hard for anyone who's pulling a camping trailer. But it was no problem for Chris and Hicks. Pulling up to our home for the evening, we were grateful to have the trailer full of extra supplies and grateful to have got to camp before the sun went down so we could enjoy some of the gorgeous views this mountain offers. As any overlander or frequent camper knows, more gear, thanks to Hicks, means more things to set up and tear down. And to be honest, it had been almost a month since the entire family, along with Chris and his girls, had been out. So we were pretty rusty. See, I didn't even have to look, it's big. Just, Ooh, it's coming back on you though, it's coming back on you. <laughs> <laughs> but we were in good spirits, even if we were giving each other a hard time about, well, just about everything. 
So Chris like wants to talk to me right now. But I'm like doing stuff and I can't really pay attention to him, but don't tell him because I'm gonna keep going like, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, like a spicy but sweet. So the practice, like the muscle memory, is a bit fatigued and forgotten. You know what? I don't have to take this ridicule anymore. <laughs> hey, Will, drop that and, and come and help me, like right now. I'm here to help. That's okay. time. Well, you don't need my help. I put my shoes on. I don't need your help. Are you serious? Do you know how long it took me to put these shoes on? Like, a good 10 seconds, man. Uh, ask me to help you. Ask, go ahead, ask. Do you need me to help you? No, no, you ask if Will needs to help Chris. Will need to no. help me. I'm gonna throw the shoe at you, <laughs> like the guy did to George W. Bush. Oh man, that is... But for a very like different a, reason. A big insult. For a very different countries. reason. Will, you've made it back in the womb. Hush up, hush up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> As we bantered on, our kids actually got the rest of camp set up for us, and we had a little bit of time to just revel in the colors of the sunset. This mountain range, although not the tallest or most dramatic, offers some astounding views of the Cambridge Valley across to the Cascade Mountains, as well as down into the Treasure Valley. Just west of here runs the mighty Snake River, which splits Hell's Canyon in two and gives rise to the Seven Devils Mountains, where we hoped to be heading the next day. So far, this was one of those rare trips where everything was going right. We had time, we had supplies, and we had some pretty great food for dinner too. So this is a Moroccan stew recipe that we're making tonight for everyone. We actually made it last night before we left and put it in the refrigerator. But it's uh, sausage and turkey, ground turkey, and uh, garbanzo beans with carrots, onions, tomatoes, and uh, poblano peppers. think it's actually really good you so. sound so surprised well when somebody throws out like rock and stew and honestly like chickpeas have never been my thing but this is very good With our bellies full, at least those of us who may have had a third helping of dinner, and our fire blazing, we settled into our camp chairs to talk about those things that only make sense when you share a campfire with someone else. It was one of the most perfect nights we'd had all year, which led to an equally stunning morning and sunrise. The next morning, I was up early, making coffee, taking in the sunrise, and planning the day ahead. The coffee from the AeroPress was strong and delicious as usual, and it's really hard to beat a strong cup of coffee and a sunrise on a remote mountain. The sunrise was just as beautiful as the sunset the night before, with really similar colors on the horizon and long shadows cascading over the land. Only real difference was the colors were coming from the other end of the sky. Armed with my coffee and my sunrise, I started thinking and planning for the day ahead. Um, everyone else is still asleep, which is why I'm trying to be really quiet. Um, but let me tell you about today. Today, I'm super excited. We have a lot of driving to do, and our final destination is this place called Black Lake. It has captured my imagination because the road going out there is 40 or 50 miles long, and it crosses mountains. It go goes by a... Uh, a fire lookout. There's an easy way and there's a more adventurous way and I haven't decided which way to go yet because the easy way allows us to hit the highway, get gas really easily, save some time and get to camp earlier. The hard way <laughs> is the way I really want to go but I'm not sure if I can convince uh, the kids that, to sit in the car that long but uh, it, I think it's going to offer us some incredible views and awesome driving so we'll see either way it's going to be great I'm glad you're coming along with us because this is too special not to share good morning Once everyone was up and had coffee we discussed it and decided to take the more adventurous route 
To say I was excited about the trek to Black Lake is an understatement. I was almost giddy with enthusiasm. And there might even be some uh, some fun driving in terms of we'll be on ledges, maybe we'll have some obstacles. I don't know, I don't know what to expect, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's go. It's funny how sometimes you never see it coming. When things happen, a lot of times you don't get a big warning sign. Sometimes you just hit a bump in the road and everything changes. We need to stop. We have a pretty big emergency here. The trailer has flipped. It hit a huge bump. I didn't see it. It was around a corner and it just, it just bounced the trailer over. And right now it's dangling off the side of the ledge. All right, hang tight, man. We'll be right there. So we were just kind of came around a corner and there was like a, a bump, like a huge, like just divot in the road that we totally didn't see it. It was in the shadow and we hit it and I slammed on my brakes, but it was kind of too late. The trailer hit it and must have just been off camber just enough that it just like ripped off the hitch. Yeah. It just like, wow. Yeah. Thank gosh. It. Thank goodness. You've got those uh, chains on. Yeah. Definitely. Gosh, so. Did you take a look? Is everything okay? Uh, Bumper looks like it's okay. Yeah. The so. box is still on there, so we did a good job installing that. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look too well. No, the Molly panel does not look healthy. Pretty jet. Oh well, the, it's the actual. That one doesn't look too bad. This one. Oh, the rack is busted too. Yeah. Look at the top. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's bent and broken up there. You see, it's. Broken. I mean, some of this stuff is a total loss. Oh, yeah. Lynch it? Lynch it, yeah. Okay. We connected Finn's winch to a tow strap, which we wrapped around the leaf spring, and let the Smittybilt X2O get Hicks right side up again. But we still needed to figure out how to pull the trailer out of the ravine without the coupler being connected. I could put a winch on it, and you could actually and keep it where it is, uh -huh. and you could kind of back into it a little bit. We decided to put Finn's winch on the back of the trailer to act as a failsafe while we pulled Hicks okay. using the safety cables that were still connected. And so what we're doing now is we're just driving for a bit on relatively flat roads and Chris is just gonna assess whether or not it makes sense to continue with Hicks the way it is or if we should uh, bug out, go home and do kind of a deeper assessment on, on the trailer. Here's what we're seeing on the trailer. We stopped, we're in a relatively flat spot. We're kind of assessing damage. It looks like this is the tire that hit the bump. It looks like this hub might be slightly uh, uh, at an angle towed in just a bit. That makes us just a little bit nervous. Don't know how big of a deal that is if we were to continue, but it's not good. And then the other thing that we have seen is this connection point right down here on the coupler, you can see that the metal is bent and potentially fatigued. Now, we stress tested this the best we could. We yanked on it up and down and all that, and it seemed to be very, very well attached, but you don't know, right? That's a risk. I think this is one of those times when you just have to do the prudent thing. Mm, okay, one vote for play safe. Chris? Um, how do you how do you feel about potentially ruining this trip for all of us? <laughs> you bastard. Uh, it's very clear to me what we should do. We need to go. Calm. We can't continue. This is why we got together. So we have recovery gear, and this is also why we're gonna head home. So uh, as much as we want to continue, it's the right move to go home. We're gonna go over to Chris and Elsha's and just have a good time, relive the experience, de-stress, decompress, and. Black Lake will have to wait, but we will come back to Black Lake and we will kick its ass. As we drove home, we realized how lucky we were that no one was hurt. We also started to feel the extent of the damage to Hicks sink in. Right off the bat, we knew that the tongue box, bed rack, molly panel mounts, and coupler were all a total loss. What we still needed to figure out was what damage, if any, was done to the axle, wheels, and the frame. Luckily, there were no issues getting Hicks back to Chris and Elsha's house, where we could take a closer look and begin to rebuild. Stay tuned to find out where we go next and what happens with the Hicks build. Those probably 
by using his foot to kick me in the face. Whoosh, right now. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Well, I'm pushing your head. <laughs> 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 <laughs>